Hi, I'm Hannah and in this short video I'm going to be showing you Toolbag 4's new free library and taking you through some of the various assets that it houses. First of all, you're going to want to make sure that the library window is open. To do this, navigate to Window, Library, or hit Shift, Control and L on your keyboard. The library will now be floating on top of the main UI. You can leave it this way, or you can dock it in a convenient place. On the left of the library panel is the folder hierarchy. This is where all assets, such as materials, skies, textures, smart materials and masks, brushes, and stamps are stored. You also have these navigation buttons just above to aid with working your way through the folders. By default, these assets are not stored locally and must be downloaded first in order to be used. You can tell this is the case if you see a small cloud icon in the top right of the thumbnail. To download an asset, double click on it. The cloud will temporarily switch to a spinning cog until the information is downloaded. Once both icons disappear, it's ready to be used. You can also choose to hide non-downloaded assets using the filters at the bottom here. Selecting the PC icon will show only the local assets, and selecting the cloud icon will show assets yet to be downloaded. The Marmoset logo icon will show only the content authored by the Marmoset team, whereas the avatar icon will filter only user-created content. You can also download multiple assets at once rather than doing it one by one. If you press shift and select all of the desired assets, this icon here will then download them all in one go. While previous versions of Toolbag did include a small selection of HDRI skies, Toolbag 4 now comes with a huge variety to be used in your projects. And naturally, they are all stored in the library. They've also been usefully categorized into interiors, overcast conditions, and various times of the day, so that you can easily achieve the perfect lighting conditions for your scene. In order to apply a sky to your scene, simply double click on the thumbnail to apply it to the active sky object in the scene hierarchy. A new toolbag scene will come with a sky object by default, so if you don't wish to overwrite that one, make sure that you create a new sky first. As discussed in other videos, it's perfectly possible to have multiple sky objects within a scene for you to switch between for different shots. One of the most impressive new features in Toolbag 4 is the ability to texture assets. And in order to support that, we've included a wide collection of base materials. As with the skies, materials are automatically categorized into common features. You can find metals, concrete, fabrics, and everything else grouped together. So long as you're in the texturing workspace, you can apply materials by dragging and dropping them onto an asset. If you're using an ID map, you also have the option to auto-mask the material in question. You can also drag them straight onto the layers panel instead, or onto existing fill layers in the texture project. Smart materials are presets containing a collection of layers, processes, and masks that combine together to create complex materials and surfaces. Toolbag 4 comes with some pre-existing ones already included in the library. These presets can then be shared easily across various submeshes or projects, which is great for speeding up your process and achieving consistency. Feel free to play around with these to see how smart materials can be utilized. However, you can also create your own smart materials and save them into the library as well. To do this, you first need to be in the texturing workspace with the layers panel open. Simply select all of the layers that you wish to combine and then right click and you'll see that you have two options, save as smart material and export smart material. Choosing the save option will save the new smart material to your library.
You can also drag your selected layers straight into the library panel to create a smart material that way as well. Smart masks are very similar in concept to smart materials except these provide presets only for masking layers. You can use these to create presets for things like very specific dirt or wear and tear. A bunch of smart masks have already been included with Toolbag 4, but as before you can make your own and store them in the library as well. As with the smart materials, right click on the desired mask layers and you then have the option to save the smart mask or export it. Choosing to save will again prompt you with a dialogue window where you can specify the name and the tags. This new smart mask will then be stored in the library in its own specific area. Smart masks can then be applied to your layers by simply dragging and dropping them onto your required layers or groups. The last category that we need to cover is the textures folder. In here you can find different brushes and grunge maps, both of which are integral to creating convincing wear and tear on your assets. With the brushes folder open you can see that there's a variety of textured brushes that can be applied to the paintbrush. These brushes are actually made up of sprite sheets and provide different levels of variation in mark making as the paint stroke is applied. The grunge maps in comparison are a set of tiling grayscale images that can be plugged into masks or used in conjunction with rough or glossy fill layers for adding microsurface information. There's a wide variety of effects here, concrete grunge, generic dirt, fingerprints, leaks and many more. And as with materials, these can be dragged directly into fill layers or masks. In addition to the normal brushes that we just discussed, Toolbag 4 also comes with these stamp brushes, which can be used to add greeble and small details such as screws, nuts and bolts to your textures. Functionally, these work very much the same as the more basic brushes. Simply double click on the desired stamp brush in the library and it will apply to the paintbrush tool. You can see here that this has now populated the various map slots in the paintbrush tool and you can now begin painting these details straight onto your mesh. One last thing that I want to show you is the searching and tagging systems that exist within the library. First of all, the search function. This is fairly self-explanatory, but at the top of the library, you can enter in terms to search for your desired effect or asset. The search does take where you are in the hierarchy into account. For example, if I search for rust at the root level, you can see that it brings up materials, brushes, and grunge maps. Whereas if you were to search while in a subfolder, such as inside the materials one, then your results will only be assets of that type. Toolbag will also automatically prompt suggestions based on what you're typing. The second feature is color tagging. This is super useful for personalizing and categorizing assets for certain use cases. Say if I wanted to tag all of these rust items so that I can use them for, say, a particularly post-apocalyptic scene, I can click on this empty square in the bottom right corner. This brings up a small dialog window where I can assign a color. Now if I clear the search but filter by that red color that I chose, you can see only the items I flagged as red are displayed. I can then disable this filtering by clicking on the red square again. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's proven useful for getting to grips with the new library features. If you want to learn more about the rest of Toolbag 4's new content, head on over to our website to watch the rest of our tutorial videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.